Hello, my name is Bernard Sukkar. In this video, I'm going to introduce the policy actions model or the macro adoption models V. This uh, model is uh, one of five uh, macro adoption models. If you like to view an overview of uh, the five models, please refer to the introductory video using the video link uh, at the bottom right. Again, uh, these uh, micro adoption models have been published in collaboration with Dr. Mohamed Karsim of the Sign University. I'm going to provide a link uh, to the journal article, the first uh, journal article covering these models in the last slide. The policy actions model uh, clarifies the different approaches to BIM adoption taken by policy makers. So it does that by introducing three policy approaches and mapping them against three policy activities. That is, if uh, uh, there is a, a policy maker trying to facilitate BIM adoption within the market, there's uh, uh, three different approaches uh, that can be taken. One is called the passive approach, another one is called the active approach, and of course the, the third, which is the more assertive uh, approach. Now these approaches uh, uh, will cover different types of uh, policy activities, you know, for facilitating diffusion of uh, BIM across a market. So you've got uh, policy activities, you've got first uh, communication or to communicate, there's engagement uh, with, uh, with the stakeholders and there is uh, monitoring of uh, stakeholder behavior. If we look first uh, at uh, the passive policy approach, the first uh, when we uh, you know, overlay uh, passive and communicate, we've got the, the first action, which in this case is make aware. So a passive communication uh, by policymakers to facilitate uh, them, uh, adoption within a market is to make these stakeholders aware of the importance of the new system process. The second uh, activity would be to engage with them. Uh, if if the, the policymaker is you know, approaching this diffusion uh, in a passive way, they will encourage them, uh, encourage uh, stakeholders to adopt uh, this uh, innovative, innovative system, innovative system process, but without really doing much more. So it's more about encouragement. And with regards to monitoring, it only observes whether these stakeholders have adopted this uh, innovative uh, system process, uh, have, have adopted them or haven't. But if the policy maker is more active in their uh, facilitation of BIM adoption or, or innovation of any kind, they will educate uh, these stakeholders. They will provide workshops, uh, seminars, networking events. At an engagement level, they will incentivize them to adopt this. So, so one example of incentives would be to provide them with uh, some financial um, support uh, that covers some of the training costs which happen in, in some markets. And and the monitoring level, they will track whether uh, these uh, uh, stakeholders have adopted or haven't adopted and what's the, the cause of either uh, you know you know either movement uh, by the stakeholder now if a policy uh, maker is more assertive in their facilitation approach uh, they would not only make aware or educate but they were prescribed whereas the policy maker will, will detail exactly what the system process to, to adopt and how to be adopted and at the engagement level they will enforce that by favoring uh, the stakeholders that have decided to adopt this prescribed uh, uh, system process or by penalizing uh, them for not doing so. And thirdly, they will control uh, this adoption process by, by again, providing what's called control gates uh, or compliance gates, meaning if you want to work with us, uh, you have to use this type of uh, software system. And then when you submit to us, you will have to, uh, you know, check all these uh, requirements that we have prescribed to you. So these are the, the three um, um, approaches that a policy maker can take across the three types of uh, policy activities. This doesn't mean that, uh, you know, uh, if at one activity level, the, the policy maker is passive, they could be more active uh, for another activity or even more assertive. So really this model clarifies that you don't really need uh, to go linear. I mean, you don't have to go uh, a, in down. So you, you don't have to always make aware, encourage, or observe. Actually, if you take a snapshot of any policymaker at any one time, it may exhibit different types of behavior. Now, this is very important to clarify that 
a sane policymaker could start with make aware and over time become educate. But at one time, when we're taking this snapshot, it is either make aware, either educating or either prescribing or prescribing. So this is a sample market where the, the policymaker is making aware, incentivizing and controlling. So this that's a mixture between a passive, active and assertive. Another exa example would be make aware, incentivize and observe. Again, here we start with a more passive communication and more active engagement and back again to passive uh, tracking. Oh, um, yep, passive monitoring. Now, another, another version of this would be to educate, incentivize, and control, or to educate, enforce, and control, or any variety of these uh, combinations of um, passive, active, and assertive uh, activities. Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this macro adoption um, models, please refer to macro BIM adoption conceptual structures, uh, review the introductory video, and please remember to subscribe. Thank you.